welcome. Welcome back. It's Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we're back with Sew Together Tuesday. It must be Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific. We're here every week, but we are back again. We are doing a special episode today with a fun flag quilt, which is something we haven't done before, and I'm looking forward to it. Before we get going, we need to make sure and tell everybody, one, thank you for joining us again. We really appreciate it. If you're new here, pop a little hand up, comment. Say that you're new, it's the first time. We're always excited to have new people here. So um, thank you for joining. And um, one of the things that we do is every week we give away two prize packages, basically, um, where you will win a tote bag and a kit and a mug. Do you want to show them? I can. I will. Show them, Hawk. All um, right. So we have this little bag, the Sew Together Tuesday bag, that inside is a lovely little cuddle kit. They vary from week to week. And a Sew Together Tuesday mug. A little ta-da. <laughs> so we will give away two packages like this today if you share the video. So share it with your favorite sewing group, your friends who love to sew, show it on your, share it on your Facebook page. Um, and then let us know that you shared it if you are on YouTube. So you'll be entered to win at the end. We will pick a winner from YouTube and a winner from Facebook. And we'll announce those at the end of the show. And then we'll get all your information. Okay. So share the video. Tell other people about it. Um, today's project is really fun. And it actually is a good, maybe like not a perfect beginner project, but if you are a beginner or if you have not sewn a lot with Cuddle, this is a great one to learn some of the skills with it and to learn a couple of different skills. So we're going to talk about stitch and flip today as well as applique to create this fun project. Um, is there anything else I need to tell them before we get into the actual project? I don't think so. I don't so. think there was think anything, in, right? I think we're in good shape. Okay. Well, it's starting to feel a little bit like summerish here. So we're in Kansas City. It's been warm all week. Not super warm. It's been really lovely, actually. Um, and as we were getting ready for this project, I realized we were making it specifically because there's some upcoming, like, patriotic holidays, right? So we have, um, what do we have? Next week is Memorial Day. Yep. And then in the middle of June, we have Flag Day. And then July, we have Independence Day. So we have lots of reasons to make something fun like this. And when we started talking about that, I realized, like, oh, Oh, summer's just about here, which is kind of exciting. <laughs> so, <laughs> it'll be really fun in my first summer here. It's an interesting thing about moving someplace because then there's all the like, oh, it's my first time having whatever here. So summer, we'll see how summers are in Kansas City. And I'm pretty excited about it. I'm excited. Okay. Yep. Um, so the project that we're doing today is this guy right here. Okay. So I'm going to hold the whole thing up so you can see it. See if I can get those ends up. There we go. Can you see the whole thing? We can. Okay, great. So it's this big flag style quilt, and um, I really like it. What's going on on the back? So it is red cuddle on the back. Very nice, and bound. And bound, yep. So I did, I did all the binding myself. Um, very happy with it. Turned I'm not out sure who else was going to do it. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> not it. So it turned. I'm really happy with how it turned out. We'll talk about a couple of things that are sort of like issues um with my version of it and um how you can prevent those issues from happening for you so this is a big project so we're actually going to make a miniaturized version today okay but this one is made with um all hide fabric so this is it's a little bit heavier because it's a lux cuddle hide so i use lux cuddle hide in royal snow and scarlet i believe Oh, yes. Is that yes. what it is? Scarlet, Scarlet, <laughs> sorry, looking at me. Scarlet, Snow, and Royal. Correct, okay. yes. So those are the colors that I used on there. So one of the things that I want to talk about before we, we actually move into it is if you decide to make this project or any other one where you are using really bright colors like this and white, it is really important that you pre-wash those fabrics. So you should pre-wash the red by itself. You should pre-wash the blue by itself and see if they lose any color so if they bleed at all one of the things that i really like are color catchers if you're a quilter you've probably heard of them before they work really well for getting any excess colors that come off maybe excess dyes but you really want to do that beforehand because if any should come off you really don't want pink edges here and i've definitely heard that story because what will happen is it will kind of bleed from here onto here so it'll remain white mostly in the middle but it'll just have pink along the edges we don't really want that 
yeah, that's a bad thing. So make sure that you go ahead or, you know, you'd be blue along one edge and pink along another. So make sure that you pre-wash those fabrics, okay? And I really recommend that you do that for any time that you're sewing with bright colored fabrics, whether it's cuddle or cotton or anything else. Make sure that you're washing that. When they get these really bright colors, they kind of over dye them. So they put a lot of dye into them to make sure that they get really vibrant, but not all of that dye gets washed out in the process. So the, the, the other side of that though, is that after you've washed red cuddle up two dozen times, it doesn't get less red. True. Yeah. It's it, not it's gonna not get like less it red. No, it's not fading. It's just getting rid of the extra dye. Yep. So really if you wash it once or twice beforehand, usually once is enough. But if you get like if you use the color cutters and there's a lot on it, I would probably do it again just to make sure that after that, anytime you wash it, you don't have to worry. That's the thing. It's like, yep. you just don't want to have to worry about it. So I'd re recommend that you do that pre-wash at first. That would be, like I said, with any fabric, including cuddle. So sometimes people think that cuddle won't bleed at all because it's polyester, but it's, it's not true. It's just the over dye that comes out. So there you go. Okay. So to get started with this um, project, let's do the ingredients list. We'll talk about the different fabrics that we use and the different tools that we're going to need. So like I said, you're going to need the, um, oh, we used Cardinal up there and Scarlet. I don't know which one. Use a red, bright red. Right. Well, <laughs> I we, use there both was a colors. Between the Lux and then the C3. There right? is, yes. yes. Those, those are two different reds, but they're very similar. So pick a red, any red. Okay, so you're going to want to get two and a half yard or two and a quarter yards of the red fabric. I, three quarters yard of the Lux Cuddle Hide in Snow, three quarters yard of Lux Cuddle Hide in Royal, and a quarter yard of the Cuddle Three in Snow that we're going to use for the stars. And then you're going to want the regular old 9014 stretch needle like we always do because we're working with a thick knit fabric polyester sewing thread we use metler metrocene we're using that today a marking pen and we're going to talk about a couple of different kinds today that you can use the stiletto from by annie which i absolutely love flower head pins because they're nice and long and sharp ones by clover are great micro serrated scissors i'm at karen k buckley's today we're going to use basting spray and i use the od 505 Water soluble stabilizer, also known as topper. We'll be using that to do the applique. And then if you want to, you can use a batting. So in my big one that we have here that I showed you, this one does not have batting. I use no batting in it whatsoever. It's just the backing and the front stitched together. When we do it today with the little one, I'm gonna use batting in it. So in the show notes, if you go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you'll find a blog post about this project. And in that blog post, there'll be a link for both the pattern and the show notes. Okay. So the pattern looks like this. I can pick that up. Pattern looks like this. Okay. Show notes look like this. Okay. So you can download that and get some, some extra information in there. And in there, we talk about batting and whether or not you want to use batting. Okay. So the reasons you might want to use batting is because it gives it extra stability. It gives it a little extra weight, makes it a little bit easier to sew in that it's not going to be uh, as squirrely because it's, you've stabilized the knit fabrics. It also makes it a little heavier and makes it a little stiffer. So if that's really, if that's what you want, that's great. And if it's not what you want, it's not, so don't use it. Um, so either way, you can go either way with this project. It doesn't really matter. So it's really just a total personal decision, okay? So don't forget to download the show notes. Every week we do these, well, almost every week. Um, we do this, we did a big one last week for Cloud Cuddle, and that was fabulous. So lots of extra information in there and sort of um, a reaffirmation of the parts that I think are extra important that you want to keep track of. All right, so the pattern is here. We wash the fabric. We're gonna start with the field, okay? So that's what we're gonna start with is the big, the part that has the stars on it. That's the applique part. So we're gonna start that full size so you guys can see how that works and talking about the applique. So in the pattern comes a little star template, which is a little half star. So there's a couple ways that you can tackle this to get yourself a star template. And I have chosen two different ways of doing it. Okay, so what I use is I got some of the quilters template plastic, all right, and you can trace over it. And I have been trying to figure out which, which works best on it, and I will say that pencil seems to work the best, and I just kind of do this little scribble thing, and this works pretty well for getting it to, to show up. What I found is that if I use the Sharpie or any sort of a felt pen, then it was likely to just spread. 
and I could accidentally like you know push it and it would go away. And that was frustrating. So the pencil seems to work pretty well. And all we're going to do is come around here and trace it. We're going to smooth out all those lines when I get the scissors out. Okay, so we're going to do half of it. And then what I like to do is I put a little line here. So I know I'm going to flip it and trace out the rest of it. I know where it's going to go. So I can match up those three points that I did and just go all the way around. Okay, and I'm just going to trace it. And then once you get this all traced out, then you're going to use your scissors to go ahead and cut it and cut out the shape. Okay, so now, can you see that little star on there? Oh, yeah. All right, so now you're just going to go ahead and cut it out. Ta-da! All cut out. Perfect. Ready to go. Look at that. It's like magic. All right. The other way to do it, if you don't have the, you could use this on like thin cardboard, you could use a manila fold or whatever you want to use that's a little bit heavier. If you want to, you can also just take your pattern, cut out an extra or print out an extra copy of it, fold it in half on that line and go ahead and cut this out. And cut it out on the fold and then you could laminate it. Then right? you could just you know, right. laminate or it. Exactly. Like, if I laminate it, I mean, mean put, cover it in packing, packing tape. Packing tape. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there you go. So the biggest thing with this is that you want to hold these edges nice and tight together. Because if you don't, they'll do weird things as you come around because they'll spread apart. So we just want to trace around or cut around it. And if it's not perfect, it's really going to be fine. I promise. We just aim for not perfection here. I don't aim for perfection ever because I'll never achieve it. And then it's just frustrating. So I just decided to not. I just shoot for the the stars or I don't know, whatever it is. I don't shoot too far. I, you know, I aim a little ways. All right. So now we've got a little star that you could go ahead and you could put laminate on it. You could put tape around it. You could just, you know, be careful as you trace around it. However you want to do it, but you got a little star template. Just make sure that you cut out or you know print out another copy because you will chop off your instructions okay so now once we've gotten our little star template done we're going to go ahead and make our stars so the way that i like to do this is i like to stabilize the c3 with the pellon sf 101 it's also called shape flex it's just an iron on uh, fusible interfacing. I always so, wondered what SF stood for. Shape flex. Shape flex. <laughs> yeah. So that's nice. what this is here. Okay. So it's basically a woven. It's cotton on this side, nice and smooth. And then it's got the little glue dots that makes it a fusible on this side. So you're going to put this on the back of your fabric, iron it on. So there's two ways of doing this. And you could trace your pattern first. So you could um, trace around this and draw it on here and then iron it on. If you do that, you need to use a pen that is not going to come off with the heat like a friction pen. Uh, I like to go ahead and iron it on first. The only time I trace it on here is if I have to um, like actually trace the shape from something else and I can't put the, t the shape up here and trace around it. Does that make sense? Yes. Like if I have to, you, and if I need to just, see you're through using, it. To... You're using the transparency of this, like this. You right. Could, if that was, if your, this was a template. If that was I, your pattern right. there, I could, you I could, could trace see it. through it and trace yes. it. Yes. Yes. Got it. Right, exactly. But since I can cut this out, it's easier for me if I just trace around it. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. And I've got both templates here. So I've taken my sample. So this is my cuddle. I went ahead and I ironed the SF-101 onto the back of it. I, I have a, Renee, what are you doing in Bavaria? <laughs> <laughs> and what time is oh, it there? That's, that's the lady from uh, up at... Uh, Oh, now I totally forgot. I could see the store. Quilting Mayo? No, 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 no. no. We're up in uh, Minneapolis area. Okay. Yeah. She's from up there. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember her last name, but she was in the class with the robe and stuff. <laughs> well, it's yeah. course. It's Renee LaCourse. There we go. Thank you. It's nice to see you. <laughs> yes, that's her. <laughs> She's over there. She goes there often. I remember she talked about it in the class, and she makes, like, the big costumes. Fine. <laughs> a joy of being on the road for last year was, like, we met a lot of people and heard some really interesting stories. And, yeah, she was one. Okay, so I've got my SF-101 ironed onto my Cuddle 3. I've got my template and now I can use all sorts of different 
um, markers. So this one is uh, disappearing ink, it says. Air and water soluble. She was up at So Trendy. So Trendy, that was the store. Thank you. I could picture it. I just could not, could not remember the name. Right, with Rachel. Yeah, it's all going to come together. Okay, so I've <laughs> traced around it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check my nap. My nap is this way. Okay, and I, I did check that before I laid it down because I wanted the star point to be coming down. Okay, but I always try to mark it again on here just so I can keep track of it. So when I say get over to the fabric, I know which way the nap is going. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut around this. So I will say, I don't know why I have this piece of washi tape on here. I can't get it all the way off. So it's disappearing ink, air and water soluble. I'm pretty darn sure it's a clover product. Um, and what I like about this one is it just goes away, which is nice. So the friction pen, it won't go away. You don't want to use a Sharpie on this because it will lay around the outside of the edge of it. You'd have to cut all that marking off. So what I like is something that will go away. So that's what I'm using this for. Got it. Okay. Um, mostly because I am appliquing onto something else. So that edge is going to show a little bit. Right. I'm going to use my Karen K. Buckley's. The micro serrated are really good for this. So using scissors that aren't micro serrated aren't going to get you the nice clean edge. That's why we like these. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to follow the line on here. I'm going to show you what happens. So I cut this with my scissors because cutting, cutting these little curves and stuff with the rotary cutter is just too hard. It is not not my idea of fun they do make a smaller rotary cutter for cut, cutting inside and outside smaller corners this is right? still a but very small corner it's a very specialized skill <laughs> yeah and i have i have a couple of those um i have one that is oh, what is it called it was rob appels the shark cutter or something um that's tiny it's like 18 millimeter it's a little bitty one and it works pretty well for a lot of things, but the thing with those two is that they are small enough that the actual blade depth isn't very deep and it will have a harder time cutting cuddle. So like if you want to cut Trade layers. Off. Yeah. So it might work better for cotton than for cuddle. So we're just going to use scissors because it's easier. Once you've added the SF-101 to cuddle three, did mm -hmm. you cut it on a Cricut or a... Absolutely. So in the pattern... Um, in the pattern, it talks about using the AccuQuilt die cutter, and there's a star, and you can absolutely do that. You could do it with um, the, I think you could do it with the Cricut. I have definitely done it with the, what's the one I have? It's a brother, Scan Cut. Okay. So you could definitely do it with that if that is easier. For me, it's faster for me just to cut it out. Um, but if you are very, I want to say, it's not affluent. If you're very, What's the right word? Technologically. Oh, no. no, like if you know how to use your brother scan and cut really oh, well. Got it. Proficient. Proficient. Yeah, not affluent. Proficient. Like my brain. So like if you're really proficient with your scan and cut or your cricket, you could probably just make it whip right out. I'm not at that skill level yet. So I can't. It's easier for me just to use this, but you could. And you can also use the die cutters, which work really well. The only oh, thing that we for suggest those guys over there. Yes. Is Shout, out Shout out to AccuQuilt. Shout out to AccuQuilt because, and they say it's on here, it's the number two, the star number two die. It has the number on the pattern. So um, should you have it, I just don't have it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flick off my little cuddle dust. Okay, so now I've got my piece. I can see which side is top. I can also see that when I was doing my preparations, I used two colors of white. Sorry, guys. So. Okay, so Shit and Fabrics has a lot of variations <laughs> in their whites, with it, from ivory to white to snow. Uh, yes, and so, they are—they don't work nicely with. Well, each I mean, other. they're not supposed to. They're different, they're different whites. They're not right. supposed to work well together. Right. So just so you know, there are there are two different whites. There is white and there is snow. And this is what I have here is white and snow, because I have a lot of fabric. So, but what we do have is snow is actually whiter than white in cuddle. Okay. That's important to know because it kind of works differently in a lot of the cotton companies. So snow is like snow white. It's extra white. It's the, you know, very crisp white. 
and then white is a little less and then natural is a little more um yellowy i think sure. how you describe it um i really love natural but for this we used um the snow and white by accident by accident <laughs> <laughs> i pulled them both out and then i yeah oops okay all right so i've got my like the the field is what we call this up here for where the stars go on so i'm going to get this ready i'm going to check it out see which way my nap goes that blue is showing up so well on camera right it is now so bright <laughs> it is Bang. a really bright blue so i will say <laughs> this one is the royal and it is a very oh, it works out really well being in kc now too right Oh, that's true. Yeah. Go, yeah, go, so, go Royals. <laughs> so this is a very bright, like intense blue, blue, which is lovely. The little one that we're going to use is Navy. And I feel like the one on the cover might be Navy in the picture. So you can kind of use whatever blue you would want to. This is what we're using today. And it really is a lovely red, white, and blue. So it shows up a little bit brighter than it is in person. All right. So hide is one of those fabrics that is a little weird because the nap goes both directions. Okay, so when we look at it, it's a little hard to tell which way this is going. Because if I pet it this way, it's pretty nice. If I pet it this way, it's pretty nice. And I always feel, tell people, if you can't tell a difference, it doesn't matter. We really want to make sure that we're just doing lengthwise, widthwise. We know what that is. If we don't know which one is top and bottom, it's okay. But let me give you a little inside scoop. Is that if I look here, I can see these fibers going this way more often and down here i can see the fibers going this way more often which means the nap is running this direction okay i got it the the nap is overhanging the cut edge more on this side right. than it is on this side right okay so does it matter mm. not really not really it's just an up and down sideways thing you need to take care some people really want to know so in classes, a lot of times, like people will be like, can you tell? And I'm like, yeah, I can tell. Like, which way? I'm like, I'm not going to tell you until you can figure it out. I'll tell you today. <laughs> so it really isn't important, but it is one of those things that sometimes people just really want to know. All right. So that's how I can tell is which way the nap is falling off more. Is it falling off on one end more than the other? Then that's the way the nap is going. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to stick the middle star on here and then I pin the other ones on. We're going to base these in position, but I want to get them placed first. Okay. So what I'm going to do to find my middle is just fold this in half and fold it in half. Is there going to be math? No. I was told there would be no math. There is no math. They told you right. <laughs> Good. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick my pin right there. And I'm gonna unfold it, and that's how I know my, where my middle is. All right, so I can go ahead and I can stick one star down here. Okay. Get it there. Now, you can use a little bit of math if you want to. Um, you don't have to though, but we wanna get these sort of arranged in, um, something where they're at least somewhat even, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay this here and I'm gonna see how far down I've got. I want at least a half an inch down there and then I'm going to- Because of your seam allowance. Right, exactly. Okay. So I'm gonna see, I've got four inches. This looks like math. Okay, well, it's, we're not gonna have to remember the numbers, so that's good. <laughs> okay. okay. So if we want, I'm gonna do it three inches down and I'm gonna, basically center that and be like just put them on here and see how I like the look of it hey okay. Chris I can that answer that one good, right the edges do not fray on cuddle once you have cut the cuddle it will shed the first time because you cut some of the nap off but after that it will not fray it will not run you can yep you can sew an edge and leave the raw the raw edge if you'd like which we will talk about when we get to the binding yes exactly okay so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to stick these on here so basically what i did was i measured three inches down slight math slight just a little bit okay okay so three inches down four inches from the edge is where i put the leg 
All right. It's probably going to move a little bit while I, you know, base these down, and it's okay. There. One hand. One oh, yeah. hand. Mm -hmm. one that's, hand. That's one way of doing it. One hand. No math. No math. Exactly. <laughs> okay. We're, mostly, we're just going to kind of use our ruler to guide us. So if I put this, I just found the edge of my fabric, laid the ruler down. It matches here. So that means they're going to go here. So this is the way I like to do my math. Because then I'm just like, all right, let me use my rulers to mark placement. Okay, so now I know that this one goes back here. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, see, and I told you I would forget something. And it would be something to spray on here. I'm going to use paper. So I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to spray the back of it, put it back in place. Okay, so we're going to use the OD505 spray. It's what I like the best. So it doesn't, it doesn't smell. It sticks really nicely. And um, it just works well. It just works well. And it will stay this way for a while. So I will say that on the Lux Cuddle, so spray basting this to the Lux Cuddle, it's really only sticking to the top of the fibers. So it will still tend to move around a little bit, and it won't stick forever. If you were sticking this to another piece of C3, it would stick better. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So it's just going to kind of stick to the top of the fibers. It's fine. You just can't leave it there forever. If we use it for the back of a quilt, you can leave it for months and it will still stick. So it really does work very well. It's different when you're spraying Lux Cuddle. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my arrow stays the right direction. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick this back. So that my top of my arrow and my side went back where I wanted them to be. Okay, and then we're gonna smack it down a little. Okay, so now it's gonna stick there, it's gonna stay in position. And I'm gonna go ahead and I can like lay down the entire thing. I'll do another one down here. I'll do that one too. Okay so we can get those fairly even. And that this has worked pretty well for me in like not having to actually um, mark it. Which would be very hard on the top side. Which is of, really hard. Hide. So no, if you just kind of use your... See also impossible in the dictionary. Yes. Especially on this bright blue. So really, if you just kind of use the rulers and they're heavy enough that they don't move, that it's easy enough to get those in position. So you're going to go ahead, put all of those on there. Okay, so each one of them will get stuck on. Then we're going to lay a piece of water-soluble stabilizer on it. Now, the reason that we do this is to cover it and make it uh, a little bit easier to sew, and it helps to make the star itself pop off the fabric a little bit. So I'll show you. So we're going to stick a little piece of, and this is just water-soluble stabilizer. There's a few different companies who make it. I mean, and anybody who does embroidery stuff makes this. Got it. Now, even though it's water-soluble stabilizer or water-soluble topper, we're not actually going to use water on it later. Correct. We are going to just pull it off. Okay. Okay. It means that in, when you wash this, it will all disappear, but we don't want to actually get it wet because it'll just kind of turn back into glue and then it gets into the fibers and that's not as much fun. So you can go ahead and do this. If you wanted to, you don't have to spray baste it down. You could just pin the crud out of it. And um, that's a technical term for it, just pin the crud out of it. And um, <laughs> just pin a bunch and then it will probably stay in place. But I do find that using the water soluble and the spray base makes it stay a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to do this with all of them, and then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine. I'm going to leave this one undone. I'm going to pin the edges, and we're going to um, sew a little bit of this one, too, so I can show you why I like the water-soluble. Okay? Also, I will say that there's a difference in that some of these, I used a knit uh, interfacing, because that was what I found, and I wanted to try it, and it's, um, I don't like it as much. Okay. So, just my... Can you can you express why? Can I elaborate on that? Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> the reason I don't like it as much is because it's floppier. So this one is nice and stiff, and it will stay there a lot better. This one is just floppier. It didn't actually um, add a lot of stability. It doesn't add the stability that I want to it. It will Got still it. shove. So as I'm sewing this, I come down here and like, so if I stitch this, this will still 
do this really easily. Okay. And start to shove things. You see how much it'll shove around? Sure. This one, it can't do that. It doesn't it doesn't shove around like that. Okay. So it really just adds a lot of stability that I'm like, oh, I like that. You're staying where I want you to be. That's great. I'm always looking for ways that I can kind of cheat having to be really careful about it. Um, so that's one way is using the SF-101, which is the woven Mac, okay, instead of the knit back. All right, so come on around. We'll get the machine set up. So um, there's a couple of different ways that you can stitch this. Generally, when I'm doing applique, I like to do either a zigzag or the quilting applique stitch. And we're going to do both of the, them on here just so I can show you how they work. Remember how I said I should make sure I have all the tools? I don't yes. see a stiletto. Hmm. So I'm going to go grab one really fast. Oh, no, here it is. It was just hiding. Okay. Okay, good. Phew. All right, so I have the uh, open toe foot on here so that you guys can see a little bit better. And when I'm doing decorative stitches, which is what this is, it really does help to see what you're doing. So first we're gonna switch to a, a zigzag. So the zigzag um, depends on what you wanna do. Uh, we have a few different ones that I've used. We're gonna make it longer. So I'm gonna do a two and a half. What did I say on there? Four and a four. A four and a four. Well, a four and a four is big, but let's try it on there. Maybe I did do it a four and a four on there. I did two sizes, so it gets confusing. Let's give it a try. We'll do it around part of it, and then we'll switch if we want to. Okay, so I'm just going to start in one of the corners. I'm going to put my needle down and see if it's in the right spot, because then I can kind of just shove this over a little, and we'll end up catching in the right spot. So as I'm going, what we want is this needle to come down, and you can see it a little better with the open foot, is that I want it to come down just to the right of the fabric. So I'm just going to kind of aim that. I want it to land on the blue, but to be 99% on, um, on the white, okay? So on the actual applique part. So I'm just gonna take my time and go around this corner, and then I'm gonna kind of just wiggle things and make sure it stays nice and close, and that this stays nice and flat. So that's really kind of the key. And I'm just gonna shift and move things around, okay? So just kind of work it through. I feel like nice and slow works really well. Now when I ended up in the white, it's fine. Okay. What we really want to do is end up so that most of it is on the white and not hardly any of it's on the blue because the blue, it'll show. And what we want is it to end up here. So if you want to, you can actually switch it to a narrower stitch. So we're gonna do this just a little bit. I'm gonna get around this leg of the star. Is that what they're called? Legs? Sure. I mean, it, arms, starfish, arms, they have arms, legs. I don't Something know. Like they, have a, they have. So let's see. So the pages. width. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's look at this right here. So the four wide, you can see it takes up a big hunk of the edge. So let's make it a little narrower. I'm going to take it down to a three, see what happens. Okay. So we're going to take it down to a three. I'm going to keep the length nice and big because I like how fast it works around the star. And it doesn't actually have to be square, even though I generally work that way. Okay, I'm going to do something. So one of the things, too, that you can do is come up here. So most machines have a little slider. I really want to take my time doing this. So I'm just going to slide it so I can't actually push the, lit, the foot pedal too fast. It will make me slow down. Because sometimes it's really easy to kind of pedal to the metal it. See, nice and slow. There we go. That's as fast as I can go. It's pretty good. It's going to keep me accurate, which I like. I know some people it would drive them crazy. Oh, look, I can get a little faster. Okay. Room, room. Yeah. <laughs> I think as Patty was telling me how she loves just so fast. I was like, oh, not me. Okay, so now I'm going to try one more thing on here. So I'm going to shrink the length just a little. And I'm going to shrink this just a little bit more. We're gonna see how narrow could we get this and have it still catch that edge and look okay. I've heard of playing, you know, Bob and Chicken, but now we're playing Needle Limbo. <laughs> yes, something like that. <laughs> Let's see how fast it, or how well it works. How fast. How okay, so I will, you go? I will say that this, yeah, this being a little bit um, narrower, I do kind of want to be a little careful 
because I can't really get off there. It's just not catching a whole lot. So I want to be careful about it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lock my stitch. And again, yeah, you're probably right, Rosie. Star point. There we yeah, go. There we go. So what I like <laughs> about using the stabilizer on here is it keeps this edge really clear above the Lux Cuddle. Okay. What I found happens here, and we'll start to sew in as we come around this next side, and you'll be able to see it a little better. So I can see that edge really nicely, but what starts to happen is even here, you can see it. See how the blue works its way up on top? And then that's going to get sewn in. It gets sewn in, but also it's just harder to see where the edge is now because the edge is somewhere under the blue. So that's really, sorry, I'm bump you. That's really the hard part for me is I can't see the edge as well. So I'm gonna come around here. And over here, I've got the blue is up there. And I can I could push it to the side. I can get back in here and I can kind of push that off. But it makes it so everything is a little a little harder to see. And as I come around here, it's gonna get even worse on this other side where the nap really wants to come up over that. Oh yeah, totally changes so do you see direction that? So right there. If that gets flipped up over, look how far it can cover it. Yeah, you can't see the shape of the star anymore at all. Exactly. Got so it. that's really why I like to um, that's really why I like to use the stabilizer is it just makes it so that never happens. The star just sits right above it until I'm finished. And then if I wanted to, I could soften up those edges, but I don't have to. I can keep it nice and crisp. All right, so let's go over here. So once I've gotten all the stars on there, I can go ahead and take this off. And it just peels out. Anything that gets left stuck in there, I know that um, some people will go back in there and um, try to use a Q-tip with it with some water. But what I do, because I don't want to get water anywhere near it, is I'll come back in here and see if I can find it. No, oh, now I got it all out. But if it gets stuck in here, you can actually like come in with your little stiletto and pop it out. Okay, but you can see how nicely that sits right above the Lux Cuddle, which is great. Let me show you this one, because this was how I didn't do it right. Do you see how that point just disappears? Hmm. And that's because I didn't use the stabilizer on top of it. Okay. Okay. Was that a, was that a blanket stitch on that one? Oh, I don't know. We're going to talk about it over here. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I... <laughs> too much. Too much. Okay. It's just showing you one aspect of it. All right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Don't get too picky. So this is my little miniature version of it. So I wanted to show you in real life how big it is. Then I wanted to show you a couple other ways of doing it. So I used the zigzags here. So this was a little bit wider zigzag, a really skinny zigzag. All right. Just like we just we just did. Okay. All right. So you can see that. So this is a little bit wider. We move over here. And this is a little bit narrower. Get it to focus for you. I also did it with a straight stitch all the way around, which is not as much fun. I would say it's a little harder to keep that even. If you use an even feed foot or find a spot on your on your foot that you can kind of keep it even with, you could do it. I feel like it turned out okay. Um, and then this one is the quilting applique stitch. And you'll notice that this is torn up a little bit because I wanted to look and see how much I could see the white stitches. Because the way that the quilting applique stitch works is that it does three little stitches and then it comes over and bites the fabric and then it does three little stitches and comes over and bites the fabric so those three little stitches were over on the blue in white thread so here's a little spot you can kind of get in here with the stiletto take it out okay so what happens is i don't know if you guys will be able to see it very well but over here, I can see little white stitches. I can see little white stitches right here. Barely. They're on the blue. They're barely there. But I was like, I wonder if it would work any better if I actually stitched it with blue. And if the blue thread would hide in here, or if it's better if the white thread hides in the blue. Does that make sense? Okay. So then we kind of move over here. And this one I stitched with the navy. I haven't looked at it. So let's give it a look. And see what we like better. 
So as you guys, if you've watched before, you know, I like to just kind of experiment with things and be like, how does this work? How does this work? Hey, and Debbie, really... she is absolutely using, uh, always recommends a walking foot with Cuddle. Uh, yes. In this case, uh, she's using the Baby Lock Chorus, and that comes with the digital dual feed, yep. which is their version of a walking foot. It's kind of got a little tank tread on it that drags the fabric through. Exactly. Yep, and we definitely want to use some sort of a walking foot. I'm just going to pull all of this off down over here so we can see them how they finish. Okay. All right, so this is with the blue. And so I can actually see these. This is what I was wondering is if I would be able to hide the stitches in there more, and I can't. So this may be a look that you really like. I actually really like blanket stitches, and so this doesn't bother me at all to see all those stitches. I think it makes it look kind of fun and a little more hand done. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that's just a different, a different look. Getting all Betsy Ross on it. Exactly, although you know that's just a myth. Don't burst my bubble. <laughs> okay. okay. So we're going to go ahead and just pull these out so we can kind of see how they look in the end. All right. Let's turn it around because the stars do face that direction. All right. So. Let's see if we can get it to come in and not be so blown out just a little. So there's, yep, there we go. So there's a star with the blue stitching. There's the star with the white. So same, that's the quilting applique stitch. Okay, this one is the wider zigzag. This is the skinnier zigzag. And this is the straight stitch. Got it. Oh, okay. All choices that have their own pros and cons exactly so it really is what you want and as you can see you know you get far enough back you can't see any of it it just becomes part of it all right not everybody's going to make a star stitching sampler quilt though <laughs> exactly so they should probably just pick one and pick then one. do that one all right so that's why i wanted to show you is because i really do feel like it is um it's kind of personal as to which one you like best i'd love like Put in the comments. Yeah, I'd love to know what you guys like best and why you like it, um, because it is very personal. I, I think a lot of folks are really into that blue blanket stitch. That's what it, I'm seeing. It I, turned out as well, maybe better than I thought it might. It becomes so. a design element and as opposed to something you're trying to hide. Yes. I think yeah, maybe is exactly. a way to say it. Exactly. Because uh, when you're top stitching with Cuddle 3, it will play a part of the the stitching of what the look of it is. Because if you're using a Lux cuddle, you can scritch it up and hide all the stitching, which is great. But with the C3, you can't really do that. So I do feel like there's something good about kind of embracing the fact that it's gonna leave a mark and making it the mark you like. A great question. What about the transparent monofilament? Can you use that to sew cuddle? You totally could. Um, you would get, but you would get very much the same look that you are getting from the white thread. Because you I can't see the white thread. What you're seeing is the stitch that it's making. Mm -hmm. So it would be the, basically the same look you would get if you couldn't see the thread. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I don't feel like it would be... Um, in my experience, I don't think it would be a big enough change that I would be willing to do it. Does that make sense? However, if, I suppose if you were embroidering around the or, or appliquing a bunch of different colors and you didn't want to keep changing your thread, you could that just use the That would be a clear. great option. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay, so next we're going to put the quilt together. So once you've gotten the... Oh, this is what I did. So, <laughs> all right, truth moment. I realized earlier that I had two different whites and I was like, oh, I got to fix that. I did. I went and stuck SF101 on the back of a real actual white and then I put it in the back and didn't use it. Oopsie. Um, yeah, so we'll put that to the side. So now I have okay. more white stars. All right. <laughs> That's hilarious. I prepped and, and then forgot about it. Okay, so I've got... In the pattern, you're going to cut strips. So you're going to have short strips and long strips. These are my short strips. Um, your short strips are, I think, around 32 inches in the pattern it tells you. And then you have width of fabric strips. One of the things that I found was that my width of fabrics varied. So it would be suggested that you measure those and pick a, pick a length. 
58 inches would be great. Just measure all of your wide strips to 58 inches. You're going to measure all your small strips. Might as well measure your big strips. Um, I did have it, so it worked out fine, but know that it does happen. Okay. The bolts say 58 to 60. Yep. And they are right. They and, are 58 and, to 60. And, and actually, you found one bolt that was like a little more than 60. Yeah, it was almost 62 inches. Yeah, yeah it was wider. So, um, which is fine. If I were putting two pieces together, it wouldn't have mattered at all. I was just putting two different fabrics together, so it mattered. Um, okay, so this one, I'm going to use this fun print for the back instead of the red hide like I did for the other one. This is Digital Cuddle. Freedom Ring is what it's called. And it is a really, um, just a lovely little. Right, we're um, going to come around so we can we can see it right side a up. A little print. Because I think it's a fairly new print for us. I think so. Yeah, I and can't it's remember. Really, I really love it, though. I'm into, I'm into old trucks, so that suits me. It's and very I think fun. I feel like. Wagons. <laughs> it should be. I love it. So it's very cute. We're going to use this for the backing. So I've gone ahead and I have. Um, I've gone ahead and basted most of it down. I'm just going to baste the rest of this. So you can, you guys can see how I do that. I'm going to use the Odif again. And I'm just going to put this. I feel bad. This is my show notes from last time. So I have to like spray over people. Sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray the back of this. <laughs> I'm going to move my things down. So what you can use is parchment paper works really well for this or um, newsprint, anything like that's just extra. I've seen you use a piece of muslin or a, yeah. like a, or a, even like a, an older sheet. An like older sheet, sheet works really well for underneath. I use that a lot. And that's great too. The older, the older sheets work great because if, after you've used it for a little while, you just throw it in the washing throw machine. Throw it in the wash. And yep. you're back to back to one yep exactly which is kind of nice the same with the muslin is that you could just reuse it and reuse it and reuse it instead of throwing something away every time okay so go ahead and i'm going to lay this out so normally i like to push it away from me but it was on this side so pulling i'm just going to make sure so if it's you know not in the right place i'm just going to lift it up and fix it so that's one of the great things about the Odif is that I can totally pull it apart, lay it back down here. So should I get a little wrinkle in there? I can fix it. It's not a big deal. Okay. I'm trying to get this all the way down. So like I said, this is the small version. So the one that I did is 60 inches wide. Just can't do it on this, this board. This is basically a so fourth we're gonna do of that. A quarter of right. it. Right. Just, yeah. just because it's going to be easier to deal with around the table here. Exactly. And that way I get to show you all the steps and not spend so much time sewing long seams. Okay, so one of the things that I realized when I did this one is that um, the line at the top, the way that we're gonna put the top together, we put it together in two different pieces and we wanna make sure that that line stays nice and straight. With this fabric in particular, I've actually got a line. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna draw this line on the back. I'm just gonna kinda move that over there. Looks like it should be this one here. And I'm going to draw a line along the top. So I'm going to actually go ahead and use my Sharpie. And that's OK in this case because it's going to get hidden in the seam allowance. We're going to cut it off later. So when I trim up the quilt, I'm just going to cut that off. Got it. Okay, so that's basically where that line is. It probably won't match perfectly, and I don't really care. Um, it's totally fine. It's certainly so, better than than risking having your stripes be this wonky. way. So I'll show you when we get to the point of where it could go sideways on you, because at the beginning, it won't seem like it's any big deal, but it really can go a little sideways. So I just marked the back of it. I did that on the other one, too. I marked like a top line less than an inch from the top. I just drew the line, not cutting it off and trying to keep it even. I'm just going to draw the line and then we're going to put the quilt together. So the way that we do this is we're going to put all of our stripes together and then we're going to go ahead and put the, um, the shield field field on there. Okay. So I'm actually also going to draw a line here so that I can get my side nice and straight. So these are just kind of lines that we're 
we're going to use as a guide. The other thing is, so we have one line that we're going to draw, and then we're going to draw another line at 21 inches down. I'm going to get the numbers right for the big one. You're going to draw another line 21 inches down and another one 25 inches down. And those are really just going to help you keep those lines straight. All right. So I'm going to divide it in half and do that. Okay, so this is my line that's 21 inches down, and that's basically where my stripe should end. So if I do it right, that's where my stripe should end. And keeping in mind that, that all of these measurements double for the, the real size. No, no, no. no? I'm giving no. them the real size. Okay. Just don't don't nope. mind me. I'm just going to make it more confusing. Nope. The, the, real, the real sizes are right here, and we, we explain okay. it in the show notes. Okay, good. Okay, so then I'm going to measure down again, and my blanket should end here. So this is also a great way to check that your backing is actually big enough before you get to the point you've put your whole quilt together, because that would be frustrating. And nobody wants their last striped to be a smaller size. So a lot of times we don't really care with the blankets and I'm like, yeah, just stick it together. It's fine. Um, but this one, I feel like we want these stripes to all be nice and even and it to actually work out the way that we want it to work out. So we're going to give it a try. Okay. All right. So now I've basically just kind of given myself, a, I don't know, a little bit of a map to work with. All right. We're going to start. I want to be, I want to make sure it starts with a red. On the top, are those the wrong ones? Yes. So it starts with a red on the top, correct? We get there. Yep. Okay, and also I am using the cuddle three on this one just so it's a little bit easier to see. So this one we're going to start here. This I'm going to make sure that the nap is going down, and we're going to do this the exact same way that you put together a stitch and flip quilt of any sort. So all of our quilt kits are made this way. Okay. So these are going to be the first thing I sew on, but the first thing I want to do is actually spray base that guy. Thank you. And I just folded it on itself so that it doesn't uh, get spray based on it, the front of it at all. Okay, I'm just going to spray a little bit and then I'm going to get this down. So you see if I flip this over, it wants to come over weirdly. And I want it to go nice and straight, so I'm going to pull it up here and make sure that it goes right along that line. So this is how I'm going to work it so that it stays nice and straight. And as I'm aiming, I'm going to aim for this line. And the next one, I'm going to aim for the next line. So I at least have something that I'm going toward to try to keep it nice and straight. Okay. Put these to the side. <clears throat> Go ahead. So this, I'm going to put this here. We're going to pet it. Make sure the nap's going the same direction. Now, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to turn this around. Because when you're right-handed, you always want to pin away from you so that when we put our uh, when we put this through the machine, that I can take the pins out nice and easily. So I'm going to pin the beginning, the end, the middle, and then in between a little bit. So this is the double pinning you'll see lots of times and in lots of different patterns. So when it tells you to double pin it, this is what we're talking about. So the only reason we're using any C3 right now is because this is the smaller version and it's gonna be a little easier for her to show what she's doing. Right. But the big quilt is all hide. Yes, I made so, it all with hide, but truthfully, if you wanted to make it all with C3, you could. Yep. Um, yeah, but the other one is made with the Lux Cuddle Hide. I'll bring that up. There will be no difference in construction. Nope. The, the seam allowances are the same. The pinning techniques are the same. Yep. It's all exactly the same except smaller and in flatter fabric. Okay, so I'm going to change my uh, foot back to the regular foot because this, the open toe foot really is for decorative stitching. And I'm not doing decorative stitching. I'm, I'm stitching it for reels. And this will help to keep everything where I want it to be by using this foot. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the 
this in here. And you double pinned like I, you normally do. Yep. Because that top, that white layer hasn't been basted down. Yep. And I said this, I stitched, I think I might actually have to stitch this with the smaller stitch. Are we zigzaggy? No. I'm going to do it with the straight stitch. Okay. Hold on, I'm going to do some measurements really fast because now I'm, I'm questioning myself at the smaller. And I, like I said, I might have to do a smaller. Seam allowance. Seam allowance. So hold on. So this will be a little less than 11 inches, and I've got four to do. So they end up being a little bit less than. Yeah. So we'll do a quarter inch. But we're doing a half inch seam allowance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the flag, and it's not going to work, and that would be really sad. Hold on. Wrong the, button got the, pushed. The things that we do to make this easier sometimes, sometimes don't. make it harder. <laughs> make it harder. We're not going to do math though. You're just going to sew it at a half an inch seam allowance. Okay. What stitch length am I at? I can't two see. Point, it. Oh, you were at 2.5. You're at three. Three and three. When was I at 2.5? I'm so confused. I didn't change anything. Oh, maybe when I went to the other stitch. I, ha I do have it saved for my straight stitch because the default for most sewing machines is 2.5, but there is a way to save stitches. Most machines have this too. So if your machine does this, you could save your default. So it will just default to three, which is pretty great. If, you know, all you sew is cuddle like you do. Mostly. Right, exactly. <laughs> but even if you were working on a project to be able to come back to it, like when you turn your machine on, it's at the right stitch length would be really helpful. Okay. Oops. Now I've got that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray baste it. Just a little bit. Bring it over and give it a good little tug and smash it down. You're flattening out that seam allowance. Yes. Underneath. So one of the things that is different about doing this with the batting versus no batting is this is a lot easier for me to hold this here and smush this over because this is stable. When I was using the Lux Cuddle on the backing, it wants to move too because it's just a knit. So using the, um, the batting makes it switch um, fold over a lot better. So I can actually show you really quick on here that there are a couple of places. No, I'm not going to be able to see it because I could see it yesterday. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. But there's a couple of places where it got, it's like, just like a little bit looser in here because right. I couldn't get it pulled quite as tight. It obviously didn't make a huge difference. Okay, But it does happen that it's a little harder to, to get it nice and tight on there. Okay, so we're going to plow through this a little bit. If you guys have questions, let me know, because I have to get all of these on before we can do the next part. So we're just going to put this together, stitch and flip. This is exactly, like I said, how you can put together any size quilt, and all of our kits are done this way. So any of, like, the Bambino and the Wee One and Crazy Eights, they're all this stitch and flip method. I'm basically going to stitch it down, flip it over, spray baste it, do it all over again. Okay. That seems like the right seam allowance, huh? That looks like it's halfway. Yeah. All right. So then I'm going to double pin it and go back over it one more time. I'm going to end up having lost pins over here because I like I should use be using the same amount each time. I'm two pins less. So one of the things you'll notice as like, oh, okay, they're over there. <laughs> so one of the things you'll notice as I'm pinning is that this wants to curl. And because it's cuddle three, it's going to curl even more than the Lux cuddle does. Okay, pros and cons. So one of the things that I do is if you come over the top, Hawk, you can see how far under this is, where the white is. Oh, yeah, that's hanging over quite a bit. It's quite a bit, and it's really hard to tell. So if I pinned this in and then I stitched it down, it's fairly likely I could miss that. So I really do just kind of pull it back, stab the pin in, and get it in place. Is there a kit available and for this? No. I no. didn't think that there was. There How is it? not, but really, it, it's just the three fabrics that you need. 
or I guess there's four. There's a little. The backing uh, fabric. No, because the backing choice. fabric, well, it could be your choice. Um, I think that in the pattern, it has you use the, the red as the backing. I think they give you enough. Yeah, because it's two and a quarter yards. You're right, it is four because there's two different whites. There's a Lux Scuttle white for the stripe, and then there's the C3 the for C3. the stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's, um, it's a, but really it's just yardage. And the way that the pattern is written, so I will say that there's a couple of things that are in the pattern that might seem a little bit weird. And it's like one of them is how you cut the binding is you cut a couple of 30 inch strips and then you cut with the fabric. And that was literally done to save you from having to buy more yardage to do with the fabric for all of the binding strips. So it just lets you use more of the uh, fabric and not have to buy extra. So it was conceived to conservatively use the fabric. There's the a great question from Peggy. Does does the different type of cuddle produce more lint in the machine? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I don't know that there's a real difference between cuddle three and Lux cuddle, but they are different kinds of fibers, in my opinion. Like I don't really know for sure because I haven't been there to work with the fabric or when it's being made, but I do feel like this is a little heavier and less likely to kind of go everywhere. Like it doesn't end up on the top of my machine, like the Lux Cuddle ends yeah. up being a lot The Lux fluffier. Cuddle has a tendency to, the fibers float to around float in more. the air a little bit. So the whole, the whole way to handle that is to never have the, the fibers get to your machine at all. Right. So Which is, how do you, know, you, how do you handle that, Teresa? Well, I don't know. I just showed you the fibers on my machine. Well, so <laughs> how do you suggest other people do as I say, not as I do? So there is that. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, I just I get it off the fabric before I'm sewing the fabric. So the the fibers that end up around the machine are just, you know, the fibers that have floated around. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to cut it and then you go ahead and put it in the dryer. Let it tumble around in there for a few minutes with a wet washcloth, damp wash, washcloth. And um and then what that does is it kind of knocks off all of the extra fibers. And did I cut that wrong? Now I'm questioning myself. Um, it'll knock off all of the fibers and then you end up with um, less of them near your machine, which is good. And that's what we want to do is avoid that. This is shows four, right? And I'm just going to question myself because I'm like, wait, I have an extra one. Hold on, we're going to follow it. Yep, four. Sometimes I get eager in all of my cutting and that's what looks like what happened. I miscounted. All right. So the nice thing about these lines is I can really, I can kind of judge my straightness. So it looks to me like I'm starting to what we call smile a little bit right here. So one of the things that I can do is I can come in here. I know this is straight and I know this is parallel to the first line. So I can find a mark here that on this end this one here, so this like three quarters, whatever it is, two and three quarters, is where it ends up and get it to go all the way across. And if I look here, do you see how that's off right here? Mm -hmm. So it's even here and then I do, I started smiling. And this can cause by all sorts of things. So when I'm doing strip quilts, I often do this where I mark something because it will start to go sideways on me. And this is my, my fix for that is that I can get that to kind of come back. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin this down just a little bit to try to straighten it up. And this is literally why we put these lines on there is to keep this from becoming a worse problem. So as you go, if you haven't marked it, it will get more and more and more so that by the end, you're a half an inch or an inch off. Does that make sense? It does, this okay. gives you a chance to, to correct, course correct halfway through. Exactly. And yep. we're going to do it twice. And I will often do this on the bigger blankets a couple of times that I'll mark them. And if you get it so that it's off, you I could actually have redrawn a line here and then bumped this fabric up to it. And sometimes I'll do that. So I'll just give myself a new line to, to kind of line it up to, to even it. I should probably get my pins back from over there. Huh? Okay, so we're going to see if that will kind of fix it. and make it so that it's not too far off when we get the rest of the stripes on. 
Okay, and it can be caused by all sorts of things. It often happens at one end or another. And I think, this is just me having sewn it a lot. I think that what happens when it gets brought in, you're kind of off just a little bit. Or by the time you get to the end, you kind of swing the fabric just a little bit, which I think is probably more common on the bigger quilts too, because they're heavy. So just being aware that it can happen is really the first step in making sure that it doesn't happen. We'll go ahead and back stitch. And again, this is a faux half inch seam allowance. We're just gonna work our way across. Yeah. Okay, and by doing this double pinning, you can see that it doesn't shove the fabric as much, which is great because it's one of the things that people get concerned about with cuddle. And also is just kind of keeping a tab on it with the stiletto. If you're working with the baby lock, the higher end machines have an automatic, like they can tell which fabric they're working on and they will release the presser foot pressure. If you're working with a lot of other machines, you'll want to go ahead and release the presser foot pressure so that it's a little bit lighter. I found that's extra important with the Berninas. I have a Bernina 590, I think is what it is. And that one I have to lower the presser foot pressure from 70 down to about 30 to 50, depending on the quilt. And that will help it feed through and not push. That's the point there. All right. Now we got one more stripe comes real close, but it's parallel to that stripe. That's the important part. So that it ma doesn't match perfectly. One, I'm doing math that it's a weird way because I'm doing it smaller. But what's important is that this is now rectangular and doesn't swoop up. Got it. Does that make yes, sense? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a couple of points in here that we, uh, we tell you in the pattern or in the show notes. Sorry that we talk about, and I think this is very funny. So draw a line 25 inches down. In a perfect world, this is the bottom edge, okay? <laughs> we don't live in a perfect world. So that was the whole point, is to make sure that you understood. It's probably not going to end up there, and it's okay. It's fine, all right? We're just trying to keep a rectangle, and this is the easiest way that I've found to keep that happening, all right? Just to make sure that we have something to aim for. All right, and if it doesn't end up there, you know what's going to happen is this is going to get covered by the next stripe, so it doesn't matter. And this is where this is where I start to not quite understand, but you're, you're right. You're so this is where it gets weird, totally, because now we put the stripes. I'm like, okay, where do we go? We're actually going to sew this piece on here, so we're going to do stitch and flip the other direction. Okay, so I'm going to again, I'm gonna make sure that my nap is going the right way, and then I'm going to sew it on over here. Okay. That really all of a sudden doesn't seem like it was as hard as I thought it was going to be. Right? And there's like no Y seams or anything. No, no nothing. <laughs> all right. I'm just going to kind of even this up. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to get this lined up. I'm going to bump it up just a little bit so that my star is still in the center. Because I didn't quite get my numbers right. But it's okay. And what happened here, you can see this isn't perfectly even, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up here. And then when I flip it, it will be straight across because it's straight across here. Okay. So this, this is even, this will flip over and I'll keep it even. That already looks great. So if I did it this way, <laughs> it would end up coming this way just a little bit when I flipped it. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay. Does that make sense? Because if because if it turned off this way, that's where the fold would be would be this direction, and we want it to be perfectly um, perpendicular, perpendicular. Got it to that. Yes. That so those sense. lines are kind of just guides for us to try to make sure we're getting it right. All right, and actually, do I want to sew it that way? Jennifer, she's yes. doing a lot of eyeballing, and I think mostly that has to do with the the fact that we're not following the pattern. The pa the right sizes, exactly. The right sizes. Because when I did it the other day with the big quilt, it was totally fine. The measurements all work out great. I was very happy with it. Don't panic. Don't don't panic. You won't have to eyeball anything. <laughs> That's just me trying to make it slightly easier to not sew so many big long seams. So again, I know that this is the line I'm trying to follow. 
So that's what I'm going to do. So I am going to have a bigger allowance over there. It's okay. So now I can go ahead and put the basting on there and bring it over. So again, I'm going to cover, make sure I'm not spraying any of the fabric that's on the front. So it will wash out. The Odif is machine washable, which is great. But honestly, we don't want to have to wash it just to, you know, fix our goofs. Okay, so now that I sprayed the back of it, this line again is going to provide the mark for me to go ahead and follow this over and make sure that I've got that straight across the top. Okay. Does that all make sense? That was good, right? I think, I think we're all here with you. Okay. I love this technique. I think this is so interesting because we get to do something here and do something different here. And I really kind of want to play with this. And I'm just you know, talking out loud here <laughs> to tell you guys, I really do want to play with this because I think it's really interesting. And I kind of want to be like, okay, so how else could I do this? Because it, could I do another strip where I like sewed some on and sewed some others? And I, could I put some together like this? It ended up being funky. I don't know. I really want to play with it and see what I could do to make this technique work of mixing the different shapes. Um, I think it's super cool. So the I, next- I feel like order of operations here is very similar to English paper piecing. Almost, no, foundation right? paper or, piecing. Foundation paper piecing, mm -hmm. sorry. Foundation yep. paper piecing. We're like, yeah, this had to be done first and then you're gonna do this and then you're gonna do this. Right. And it's all gonna work because they-, they It's all they gonna work. Hiding your seams, I guess. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so this is absolutely quilt as you go method. So the next thing I'm going to do here is, and this, like I said, this works for when you're doing strip quilts too. So right here, if I get this evened up along the bottom, I'm going to mark one of my lines here of the ruler. I'm going to line that up with my seam because I want this line to be perpendicular. Okay. And I could see how this is a little bit not quite perfect because it's a knit fabric, it's what it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually going to draw my line on here. In the blue, I won't be able to see it quite as well, but on there I can. And now we're back to a perfect world. And now we're back to a perfect world. Oh good, <laughs> I can see it on the blue just fine. So now when I put this next strip on, I can get it perfectly even and I'm gonna line it up with that. All right, so this takes a little bit of extra, I don't know, not even really thinking, it's just making sure. But what I have found is that when I take the time to add these little lines every once in a while to re, what's the right word? Um, like it, it's your navigation tool basically is what it is. It's like I'm recentering myself, being like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be at. Instead of just letting it, go and get where it wants to get to. I'm controlling it a little bit extra by uh, making it be where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing where it didn't end, do in between, do a little double row. Okay, we've talked about pins a million times, but I'm gonna tell you again, that if you watch the ones that I am using that are the medium weight pins, they will tend to bend a little bit more, I have to force the fabric through more than if I use the ones that are the heavyweight pins, which would be these. Are you on me? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. That I can just easily bink through. Okay, so again, this is a heavy white one and they just come right through that. Jackie says boxes. recalibrate. Recalibrate, that was the word. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. And Mary, Mary Stevens says realign, which actually also totally works. Recalibrate is the word that was in my head somewhere that I could just couldn't find. Yeah. Yeah, and you're just kind of resetting everything to be like, okay, here's the straight line. Keep going. Um, because really, do, it does happen that it will start to smile more and more. And I've seen some that get to the other end that are quite arched. Um, 
that's not good. So I will say on the big quilt, this one, we end up having a lot of stuff over here, right? On the big quilt, that was a lot of stuff. So because it's a big backing, I really recommend that you kind of fold this over and then tackle it in through your machine because it can be a little extra. And if you've got a way to sit and sew, it's better. My standing and sewing isn't the perfect way to sew blankets, I will tell you that one. Okay, so let me get this in here. So I'll tell you, probably the measurement issue isn't so much that um, I measured wrong before with the other seam allowances is that I'm not actually being super careful with my seam allowance. I didn't, you know, it's not that I didn't measure, but I'm not measuring seam allowance super well. So <laughs> I think my needle is slightly that direction of a quarter of an inch and that'll build up over time. So if I'm taking, you know, a heavy, a heavy quarter inch, it's going to end up a, a heavy half inch. There we go. <laughs> it will end up being slightly off. I think that's kind of what happened here. So I was like, how did it end up? So this is one that you'll actually want to like make sure that you're doing pretty good at taking a half inch seam allowance. If you're not, what ends up happening is it's just a little shorter and nobody cares. Because you are at some point going to re-square it. Yep. Yep. I'm going to show you this one. Then we're going to stop sewing and I'll show you how you can do that. Okay, I'm just going to sew all the way to the end. Try to keep that fairly straight. All right. Now I'll go ahead and take the rest of my pins out. So that second row just kind of stays there as it can. Holds everything in place a little better. And now I get to start building this out. Okay. So as I do this, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'm not going to make you stay here and watch me sew it. But we're going to sew the, the rest of it. One strip at a time. You'll get all the way down to the bottom. It'll look something like this. Okay, we're just going to keep going. So you'll keep sewing these on. I think you end up having six rows down here. Yeah, because then we're going to get down to here. If it doesn't reach to here, it's totally fine. I'm going to trim it off just a little bit shorter. But one of the things about having this end here is it keeps that like, okay, we're going this direction. Then when I trim this off, and we're talking about because we're going to need to trim it, I actually have two lines that I know are perfectly square. I know this line and this line across, across the top are square. Then I can square off of here and come down and actually make this a very rectangular quilt. Okay. So I'm going to show you on the other one. Does that make sense? Are there any questions there? No, I think we got that. We're good. I got okay. that. I really love you. the way that this goes together. We were talking about it before, and I think that this will end up almost pillow sham size, which I may have to try to make into a pillow sham. Got Otherwise, it. I'm just going to have a little quilt blanket, and that's kind of cute. Um, but I'll finish that later and show you guys. I want to show you a couple of things with this big one. Now, before we go, and if you have any questions, pop them in there. Um, so one of the things that happened with mine, because I wasn't very careful, and I was like, eh, it's fine. It's fine. The end, my blanket is fine. I'm not upset about it, and there's no reason to fix it. But I am going to show you what happened wrong. Okay. So if I go ahead and I fold this. And I've got one end pinched nicely, nice and square, right? Nice and even. Mm -hmm. And I come over here. What is what's going on over there? They're completely uneven. So it got off about a whole inch in my way. If I hold it up, nobody can tell. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. But it is one of those kind of best practices. And I feel like it is important. If you know how to, how to fix that, you should probably do it, Teresa. Um, but I, so that's why I'm sharing it with you. It's because it really was like, I was like, oh, well, I thought it was working out just fine. And then when I folded it up, it didn't work out just fine. So somewhere along the way, my line started to smile. And um, cause let me see if I do... I do it this way. Okay, so if I fold it to here, I can start seeing right here, it started going off. Do you see how this is where my, my blue, sh the shield thing ends, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And if I look at where the stripe is ending over there, 
that's basically it started me. getting off at the beginning and that was the per, uh, the perfect world and then it just that was <laughs> and that was where i should have lined it up so that was right. what, when i did that i was like oh i should have stopped there reconfigured things made sure it was right had something to aim for and then could have kept going so within the first four stripes is where i got off and then it just kept going and it didn't really get any bigger but it just kept going so and i could totally see like the first one is a little off a little more a little more a little more super frustrating um but or it is it is. who cares because when you hold it up you can't tell you can't really tell so no. yes so, so like it it's, soft, it's a, great right i'm just frustrated in that like i could have been able to keep it straight and i didn't i wasn't i wasn't being careful i wasn't being um just aware of what what could happen so in the end it doesn't matter the blanket is perfectly fine i'm not letting anyone else fold it up though okay <laughs> 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 and you're certainly not telling the entire internet about it. No, that, not at all. I would never tell anybody about this, <laughs> except for you guys, okay? And then I'll tell you when you do the same mistake, don't tell everyone. All right, just I'm keep it hard to yourself. Hold the camera right now. I'm laughing pretty hard. Good job. I, <clears> I have to tell you. everybody. Um, and so, um, so you're going to get to the finish, cut it up, square it up with the um, no, cut it up, but square it up with the lines that you did. Do the rectangles, try to measure things so that they're, you know, square-ish, okay? And then you're going to go, what happened? I don't know. That was pretty wild. All of a sudden, um, we're, let's, uh, all right, let's see if we can go back to the regular layout. There Ta -da. we go. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so if you are, so when you get to that point, you're going to square it up. And then you'll want to bind it. If you are new to binding with cuddle fabric, I suggest that you go watch our video. There's one about, um, I think it's called Binding Basics with Cuddle Minky Plush Fabric. Um, it's the Binding Basics one. It will walk you through how to cut and bind the fabric. So the binding is cut at one and three quarter inches. We sew it onto the back, bring it around to the front, and zigzag it in place. It's actually very easy once you've learned how to do it. Raw edge. Um, it's just a raw edge. It's super duper easy. So um, it's a lovely one. This one, I accidentally sewed it backwards, um, which is actually fine because it works out. But it's what, one that what I, do you mean you sewed it? But you sewed it onto the front first. I sewed it onto the front and then brought it around to the back. And yeah, you can. Partly, go. well, and sometimes I do this because I can hide the raw edge better. But it definitely, um, it means that if your stitches get off on the front, you can see it on the front. So I don't recommend it. I recommend you sew it to the to the back, bring it around to the front, raw edge, and then you're just going to fluff up your edges. And any of those little stitches are just going to get hidden right away. All right. So this is what I always tell people. You can like, you know, sit and watch a movie, listen to a good book, just fluff your edges and it'll turn out beautiful. So the raw edge binding is really one of those things that surprises people a lot. And it turns out beautiful, just beautiful. So go ahead and watch that video, learn how to bind it. It's really easy. And that's, that's a great skill to have. This one needs to be finished with a binding. You can't just turn it and flip it with this construction method. Um, but it turns out really super cute. So you'll have a blanket ready to, you know, take with you to the park or watch fireworks. The or parade. The parade, like yeah. any of that sort of stuff. Okay, Maybe a Use gift it. for a veteran. Totally. Any of that stuff. So I hope that you have the chance to make one for yourself or for someone else because they're super fun. And that you can use the stitch and flip method. We'll be back next week and we're going to talk more about applique, which I'm excited about. Um while we're getting winners for the prizes this week, I wanted to show you. I moved the kit. Well, oh, I it's have back winners. there. You have Got winners? It. They're up on everybody okay. else knows. So okay. we're, we're going to do, do it. it. Angie Williams on YouTube and Diane Rembiesa on Facebook. Oh, hi. Um, she's Congratulations, comment, She commented this morning on my, on my thing. What were we talking? She asked a question about something. I don't remember. But thanks for... <laughs> thanks for reaching out i answered the question that was good um so next week thank you diane thank you what was the other angie name? angie um so make sure that you email us info at shannonfabrics.com send us your mailing address and your phone number a daytime phone number a daytime phone a number, phone number. shipping mm -hmm. yep and then we will send you a little prize package with a kit and a tote bag and a mug and some patterns and all sorts of fun stuff so um we look forward to getting your email all right, so send us that. Were you going to say something else, Hawk? Nope. Okay, so I want to um, remind you about next week. We're going to be back next week with a an oft-requested tutorial, and that is on the Cuddle Buddies kit here. It's right here. 
right here. I got it right in front of you. <laughs> so I was, a, I was gonna one, go over to the empty shelf and get it, but, <laughs> but it's I already already did. here. So that's this project here, okay? And what we're going to be doing is this little applique guy, and we're going to do it by machine. So we do have a tutorial for doing the Kimber Bear project itself for the little bear. And we've done a tutorial for doing the Bambino style quilt. So now you can watch the tutorial on how to do the applique. You'll be able to make this whole project, but which not is with very the embroider, fun. Not with an embroidery machine. We're not doing right. the applique in the hoop. We're going we're gonna to do, do it right it. here right there with this guy so if you are interested in doing so if you bought this kit there are two versions of it there's a felix the fox and a kimber bear and you can buy the embroidery files from kimber bell and do the all the embroidery the applique on your embroidery machine last year we did the felix the fox it was a very fun episode we watched part of it again this morning that was that was one that things went mm. sideways on us in so many ways. We ended up actually doing the tutorial outside of the RV. In the cornfield. Corn field, yeah. uh, at the KOA camp. So it was embroidery, <laughs> embroidery in in the wind with bugs. So if you want, <laughs> yeah, Awkward. to watch a, a very, an interesting tutorial. We did get through it and you can show, you know, you can see how, how to do it with the embroidery. But next week, because it comes with the sewing applique um, instructions here, this is what you get is how to do it by machine. So we're going to show you how to do it by machine, some of the steps that will make it a little bit easier, and how to get a really nice finish on your applique. So you can use that for lots of things, including this one, the Felix the Fox, or any other applique that you want to do. So I love this kit. I think it's a super fun one. I'm excited to make it up this week, and then I'll show you guys how to do it next week. Okay? So that'll All be right. great. All right. Is that it? I think that's Thanks, it. everybody, for Thank watching. You. Thank you for coming. Thanks for watching. If you have kids that are getting out of school, happy summer to them. I know a lot of kids are at the very end of their school year. So um, it really does mean summer's, summer's just about here. I'm pretty excited about it. So Enjoy. Until next week, we'll be back. Happy sewing.